Okay, so I'm going to back up a little. So, each one of these heavy lines, the distance between the two is going to be 0 0.2 seconds. The speed of the paper is going to be 25 millimeters per second. Okay, so you can determine that the distance between these two large, these dashed uh, heavy lines are going to be 0.2 seconds. So if you look at the distance between five of these, five times 0.2 is one second. So each time you get five of those dashed lines, so one, two, three, four, five, that's going to be one second. Uh, you can determine the heart rate pretty easily um, using either of a couple techniques. One is sometimes the EKG papers will have either three or six second printouts. So depending up at the top or sometimes at the bottom you'll see these little uh, notch marks and let's say you've got a okay I can do better than that and get rid of the small ones between you got an EKG tracing coming through Okay, pretending that this is a larger sheet of paper, you've got these notch marks up at the paper. I'm going to say that it's a six second printout because that's, that's what I typically use. Everything in between, if you know that this is six seconds, you can find the heart rate pretty easily. So if that's six seconds, to find the beats per minute, well, you just take six times ten and there's 60, so 60 seconds, that's a minute. So everything in your six second mark, so I've got one beat, find the QRS, two beats, find the QRS, three beats, find the QRS, four beats. Well, I get four beats in that six seconds. Since I times that by 10 to get a minute, I'm gonna times one, two, three, four. So four times 10 equals 40. That's 40 beats per minute. So in this EKG tracing, I have four beats within six seconds. Well, you can take that a little further. Six seconds times ten is a minute. So you just take everything that was in that six seconds times ten, and that's how many beats you have within that minute. So this heart rate tracing is going to be 40 beats per minute. All right, so that's one way, is you can use little notch marks. That's probably the easiest way. Another way is uh, to use kind of a remembering tool that uh, that a lot of people that read EKGs remember. So again, you have these heavy dashed lines. Then you've got the small okay, and then you got the smaller lines. And I'm going to bring out the heavy lines a little more. You don't need to worry about the smaller dashed lines. It's just the heavy lines that you use for uh, for the the heart rate determination. Like I said earlier, each one of those is 0.2 seconds. So the first one is, let's say I have a QRS. I can draw that better too. You have a QRS complex that's going to be... Okay. Look here, the QRS complex. Here's my R wave. My R wave corresponds perfectly there. You can You can find it anywhere. I mean, if it's one, two, three, three little dashes over, you just move three little dashes over. But since it starts nicely on a heavy dash line, we're going to use that. And you're going to have a long space in between, and let's just say right here, we're going to have another one. Oh, look, our QRS complex ended right on a heavy dash line. Makes it nice and easy. Okay, so what is this other technique? We can use little notches, or we can use this. For this one, you count the number of heavy dashed lines in between the QRS beat, so in between each beat. So if our first beat, if our heart contraction started right here on this first heavy line, so here's, uh, here's zero mark. We count the number of heavy dashed lines between. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Each one of those heavy dashed lines can be used to uh, determine the heart rate. The first one 
if if our next beat began right here on that next one, it'd be a 300 beat per minute heart rate. Well, we all know that if someone's heart was beating 300 beats per minute, they'd be most likely in fibrillation, possibly dead, um, pretty soon. So 300 is not very common. But the next one is more common. That's going to be 150. So if our next beat corresponded, so if this was moved over to right there and matched up perfectly on that line instead of this one, we'd be at 150 beats per minute. Next, uh, so our first, second, our third one over is going to be 100 beats per minute. Then finally we're going to be at 75. Then we're going to be at 60. Then we're going to be at 50. Then we're going to be at 40 to 43. Um, so, in this example, what we have is, remember, our first heavy dash line is just a, a reference one. So once we go one full cycle over, so a full cycle, and if we started here on that third little dash, on the third little dash, we just keep going to that third little dash in each set. But since we started on the heavy marked line, we're going to count from there. So one heavy marked line is 300. And another 0.2 seconds is 150, 100 heart rate, 75 beats per minute, 60 beats per minute, 50, 42, 43. So in this example, we know that there are 43 beats per minute. And a good way to do this is to not just check between one beat, but check, just verify between a couple other beats, because sometimes the heart rate can fluctuate. So the easiest way to remember is 300, let me erase this. This is something that you just have to commit to memorization, but it's 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, 50, 43. And if you get much lower, I mean, you'll never clinically see stuff too much lower um, on a patient that's healthy. So um, that's our other way. You can either use the notch marks, either three or six seconds. Six seconds, you just multiply it by 10. Three second marks you multiply by 20, um, or you use the 300, 150, 100 method.